Hello stitching friends, I'm Bonnie, Log Cabin Stitcher. Welcome to my channel and welcome to my sewing room. This will be my floss tube number three and you, if you've watched my other floss tubes, you'll see that this is a different place than I usually sit. I usually sit over on the other side of the room where I have my quilt hanging behind me as a backdrop and then I do a companion video that talks about the quilting that I do. This one is going to be a little bit different because I really wanted to share about the setup that made me very comfortable as a returning cross stitcher after 20 years. My eyes are 20 years older and now instead of doing the Ada cloth that was a lot easier to stitch on, I am loving doing um, the cross stitching on linen. And so I checked out some different videos and I found something that works with me. Now, um, if you would like to follow me on Instagram, my name is Bonnie Log Cabin Stitcher on Instagram. I would love to have you follow me. And I'm just going to share some different things about my setup. Then I'm going to share with you about my very, very first finish. Um, just two projects that I have going in process, but I made a lot of project bags this week. And I kind of found one that I like and I changed it a little bit from the YouTuber or the floss tuber that I watched. What else am I gonna tell you about? I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna show you a haul of a lot of my patterns that I have been collecting. I always have so much to share and um, I always try to keep these videos about 40 minutes, but I have been putting off sharing some of my, um, they're called the Heart Of, and it is my embroidery, and I've had some of my ladies commenting and asking to see that. And I just wanna thank you so much. I have, um, let's make sure the video is going, it is. Um, I have only been up on floss tube for about two weeks, probably just under two weeks, and already I have a large number of subscribers and viewers and commenters, and it is just giving me so much pleasure. I did um, like a little practice video. It wasn't supposed to be a practice, but I decided I didn't want it to do that as my first floss tube video. But I was saying I felt when I found floss tube less than two months ago, it was really a month and a half ago, I wanted in right away. I got into cross stitching after 20 years and I didn't know how I could share my quilting videos in the midst of this and so I just figured out I wanted to do companion videos but I will always show at the end of my floss tube a teaser of the quilts that I will show in my companion quilting video so please subscribe and like if you like this one and you will see both the floss tubes they will be titled floss tube so if you're just into cross stitching and embroidery and the things that you can do with embroidery floss those are what my floss tube videos will be. But if you also like to hear the stories behind my quilts um, and you like to see quilting and um, all that kind of fun, then yes, check out my quilting videos as well. At the end, what I'm gonna be showing are some of my mom's quilts. And there's one that I'm gonna be sending off to my niece, Emily, and it's been sitting in a box for a month and a half. Um, actually two months so now I need to share it and then I can send it off on Monday so let's get in and let's start so what I have been getting comments on and what I have been asking for is information on how ladies stitch on the higher count of linen and Riley is licking my hand now and it's very distracting so this is my Riley can you say hi there is my Riley. He is my sweetheart. This is where I stitch. If I'm not up at the cabin, I'm here at home and this is my favorite stitching spot. I'm sitting on an old futon that I got from my parents and my husband and I kind of took it apart so it was more of a love seat couch. And then the cushion. I used to drink coffee with cream and I had dumped a full mug of coffee with cream into the mattress pad found that it did not clean very well so not only did we take apart the futon and make it so it goes flatter against the wall but I have a bunch of old not old there are cushions 
and it makes the most incredibly soft place to sit. I do have upholstery fabric and I am going to redoing this because I was thinking, no, I don't want to show you ladies with me sitting here and I just have a sheet covering up the cushions. But this is, this is me, this is my life and this is my sewing room now. And I had ladies asking for me to share about what I found as the magnifying lamp. So when I first got my kit and it had 36 count and I was trying to stitch and I couldn't even see anything. I tried a lot of different things. I went to Target, bought some cheaters. Those were okay, but I generally wear prescription lenses and I was putting those cheaters in front and trying to stitch and it wasn't very easy, especially when I would look up at my chart. It wasn't that easy. So then I tried mag eyes and most ladies that wear prescription lenses the mag eyes work great. I got it from Amazon. It did not work great. So back it went and I got my refund. Um, but then I saw Jen at Felicity Stitches and she has, what was, I have notes and I will put in the notes under, after I upload, I'm going to put a bunch of notes, but Jen at Felicity Stitches, her floss tube number eight showed all her lights and magnifying um, devices and it, it's a it's a wonderful one it's very thorough and very good and that's where I found one of the things that I wanted to use so I became an empty nester less than two months ago and as my son has been cleaning out his room he's been just asking me do you want some of these things so he, I had bought him a, a lap table for use as for his laptop and his his computer use and he said, do you want this back? I don't want it. So I bought it back from him. And then I liked it so much. I have this set up also up in the mountains so I don't have to transport it back and forth. And I thought, well, that was one that I bought a year or two ago for him. Do they have it again? And they do. So I bought another one and it's Sophia and Sam. It's a lap desk. Again, I will put this in the about section, but it's cushioned. So it can get kind of warm, but it's cushioned. So Riley, you're going to have to move over a little bit. So you can see this is a good lap stand. It has this, which I guess is ergonomic for when you're working at the computer, but I found it worked kind of like a pin cushion. So I have a pin here and this is my um, counting pin. I use that for when I'm counting. I also realized it was not good to have over here because it snags and I thought I could use this short term as a needle keep and so no I lost that needle and so I warned my husband there is a needle on the floor somewhere um, but this is my lap stand and it's crooked because my Riley this is where he always he's always tucked right next to me there you go Riley okay so this is my stand my lap stand but look at there's this and this must be for um, a book or tablet or some type of computer device, but it works perfectly for something else that I'm gonna show you in a minute. Then there's something here, um, and I wanna say on Costco, I think this was like $35, you can still get it at Costco and other places. It has an LED light, which would be great, and it can, it can sit here, and then you can turn it off and on if you're just reading, or also this could be a perfect stitching thing for you, but it runs by battery, and um, it's not something that I'm even using right now because I found the perfect magnifying light. So this is what I found. And let me read you what it is. It's, it's from Amazon. I got it for $39.99. It is the Bright Tech Light View Pro Flex 2-in-1. 1.75 magnifier with bright LED light, magnifying glass lamp with base um, stand and clamp. So let me tell you why this thing is so wonderful. So it is glass and Jen was explaining that glass is much better um, than plastic. It has LED lights around here. I'll show you when I plug it in how amazing it is. I use it as a clamp because I'm going to show you it works perfect with this um, with my lap stand but it also comes with a very heavy, very sturdy base. It has a really nifty way that you can easily see how to get it in and turn it. I've never used this base, but you can even see, you can set things here if you're using it as a base. For me, it doesn't work perfect as the base. Oh, and there's more. Let me show you why this cool thing is nifty. So 
you can have this come out on this side and this is like silicone so it's non-slippy and you can stick your phone right here or bingo you could have it come out this side so this is the way I have it and I can set scissors here but generally I set my iPad there and I'm watching uh, floss tube and I'm doing my stitching so the perfect way for me to have this because I am a right-handed stitcher is I have my clamp and I'm gonna and it is quite a sturdy clamp so I get that thing clamped on in that little nook because now I have pulled out this side so I've got a little nook within there perfect and usually I leave it clamped in here and then oh my goodness I saw on Instagram um, a lady was sharing that she did not cover her magnifying light so usually I will have this covered and I need to now that I'm making so many project bags I need to make one like perfect for this um, but it does not have a cover on its own so that is something that you need but this works out perfect because I can have this here I can move it to where I need and then when and usually like I said I'm stitching here I've got all my electricity right next to me and I plug it in voila so it is very bright so this is why I don't even need this ot light which I generally use for other projects or for reading or just um, it's a great ot lamp that I have that I got at Joann's used a coupon and that's this is my sewing table usually I wouldn't have like distractions over here this is my sewing table with all my stuff my threads and everything that I have when I am sewing so this you can see it is quite a light it is perfect and um, then the magnifying I can see through my stitching it is very easy to move I can have it move wherever I want um, but I'm going to turn that off for a moment and show you um, so now this is so this is my iPad is what I'm videoing on right now because my iPad has like a huge amount of storage so usually I've got my iPad here there and I've got my viewing that I've I've got going on right now this was an awesome case I've had my iPad for going on six years now it's an iPad Air I think but this is a beautiful leather case I think it's a Mac Mac case um, beautiful leather it's a lot darker now because I use I use um, a lot of handmade um, essential oil products and I've got moisturizer on my hand and it just it's real leather so it got darker lovelier it has that aged look but it's perfect so usually I've got my ladies here that I'm watching you floss tubers but here's the other thing that I found that I truly love um, this is let me look at my let me, I'm gonna have to put my I think now the Sun is going down so not so much reflection so here we go this marvelous thing is the knitters pride pattern holder magma um, and it's the large pattern holder and it was $25.46 on Amazon so the reason that this works out so well I wish it wasn't shiny um, because that looks a little bit more modern than I'm used to but I, I, I like wearing black so it just it kind of all goes um, but this one you can clip it together generally I don't clamp it but you can see it's the Knitter's Pride and it opens up and this thing is so nifty because when I was getting rid of all my cross stitch stuff because I wasn't gonna get into cross stitching again a while ago I got um, I gave away to a thrift store my cross stitch I had a chart holder but it was a smaller one so this is great that it's large so of course I'm not showing the chart of what I'm working on right now the only thing that makes this not perfect aside that it's shiny is that I got three of these nifty um, magnets I wish I had four because then it would hold the chart down better but it's got purple so it's got this so I can I can have this go up and down as I'm following where I am on my chart either I'll stitch up or stitch down and I move that accordingly but it also has a pocket so I can keep my project in there this is the wooden hoop that I'm using at the moment until all my marvelous um, products came in the hoops that I ordered it also has a cool little pin so this is great it's like a project bag and then when I am done stitching, I'll put my product here that I'm, oh, sweetheart. Oh, he is doing what's called reverse sneezing, and I don't know why he's doing that. Usually I will give him a drink and he will stop that. So we'll see. There, he stopped. Or he didn't. So either way, I may pause you and come back. 
um, because he hasn't done that for a long time. Anyway, I can put my project here, close it up, and then I just leave this here if I'm going to be coming back to it. So I love this stand. So when I am stitching, it fits perfectly into my little slot. So this is what I'm usually doing. I'm usually looking out the window at my beautiful tree. Um, I've got my stitching here. I'm stitching away, watching you other ladies on floss tube or doing what I'm doing um, or watching TV with my husband. And it's my perfect setup. I love it because this has made me, look at how bright it is. This has made it so easy to stitch and um, perfect, not very expensive. So all together, this was maybe $100 for these three products. Uh, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. I, I'm bad at math, whatever, you get it? Um, and I love it. So now I'm done with all this stuff, so I'm gonna turn it off and put it away and show you some of my other things. So this is my marvelous setup. I was also gonna show the whole way that I do my floss organization, but I realized, see it's already 16 minutes, and I realized that that is just going to take um, much longer than I want this video to be. So that will be my next floss tube, I hope, is um, my, my floss organizer and why I love it and why it's working perfect for me. So let me get this out of the way and because I've got my quilts on the floor below me. So now, this is how I usually sit. Um, so now let's show you... Oh. Riley is showing his indecent parts. There we go. We'll cuddle him right there. So there we go. So here I have my very first, um, I want to call it my FFO because I know FFO is fully finished object, but this is my first finished object in 20 years. So this is um, out on the limb. It is, um, it is waiting for me to finish. I was hoping that I was going to be able to finish it this this week into the pin keep and because I'm in the little wren um, handwork uh, handwork club I got it as a kit so this is where I can fully finish it as a pin keep and it even comes with a little charm that you can use as a scissor fob so that is my first finished product and oh, this is why we usually don't show this part of us right here because it's it's where the muffin top happens Okay, so this was the project bag that I showed last week, and I'm going to share about all the project bags in a minute, but I got a little bit more work done because I wanted to do some embroidery. I got a little bit more work done on my project. Let's get that thread out of the way. So I got a little bit more, actually a lot more work done on my embroidery project, and it's amazing. I really, really love tight, tiny stitches, and I do not do the back stitch as my regular stitch. I do the stem stitch. So you can see right here, this is the regular stitch that I do, but this is the size I normally do. Here, it was teeny tiny. So I got inspired by doing, usually I will do embroidery with two floss or two threads, but I did that little teeny tiny part with just one thread. And you can see it is teeny tiny and I really, really wanted perfect stitches. I explained in one of my other floss tubes about what this blue marking pin is and why I probably won't be using that in the future. And so check that out if you need to. The back, I do a very thin batting. I use now Quilter's Request um, or Quilter's Dream Batting Request and it's very, very thin. So I do put a batting backing on my embroidery. I used to use um, warm and natural both in my quilts and on the backing but warm and natural is a thicker cotton so as I'm gathering more and more finished quilts as you're folding them up and I have them on um, on a bookshelf over here so I get to enjoy them they're thicker so I can't get as many quilts on a shelf plus here in California we are often quite warm and so I don't need that much thickness and then I just realized as well, I don't need the thickness either on my embroidery. So this pattern was the Chestnut Junction and it's um, Love Poems book. So that is my embroidery that I'm working on. Then my other start, as soon as I finished that out on a limb, I right away, I wanted to start my next project. And my next project um, is this Camelot's Rose notebook and our needle book. 
and I really wanted to get working on it and make a lot of progress, but then I realized I was going to be using silk, which I had never stitched with before, and I didn't have the right size of hoop. And oh, ladies, I got so many con um, comments because I had asked it, asked it. I had asked, "What kind of hoops do you use?" Because I'm comfortable using a wooden embroidery hoop. So I was recommended to check into Hardwick Manor. I went and I went on. I've got them coming in the mail. Um, needle in a haystack. Everybody is so backed up right now because so many of us are stitching and ordering so I have those coming I ordered several different sizes I excuse me I also have a 8 inch Q snap coming because I wanted to check that out so um, then I went on Etsy because I've heard about Duchess wooden embroidery hoops they are old and you can sometimes find them on Etsy or eBay I found one on Etsy. I have no idea. It didn't even say what size it was. I didn't care. I ordered it and it's on its way. So I had been recommended to check it out and tried stitching in hand. So this is an R&R fabric and it is stiffer. And so it was conducive to stitching in hand. The problem was that I wish I had ironed it before I started stitching. Now I just, I was tired, it was probably like 11 o'clock at night, but I wanted to start my next project. So I didn't quite count down right and I didn't start in the right place because I started it up too high. But one of the, one of the areas in this um, beautiful needle book is one where it's just a piece right there so this is now going to be that piece right there so um, it's not going to be a problem and I was stitching in hand and as soon as I get both of my floss tube and my quilting video done and up I can't wait I'm gonna sit here tonight with my Riley and I'm going to be doing this project and actually get some stitching done but as I ironed it was I am using two over two on this 30 count um, it did flatten it out, so I know I needed to pad the surface better, but, um, you know, I'm new at this, so that's my thing. I am going to be using my own Gentle Arts um, floss rather than the called for, um, they are called for silks, but I did get the um, Dried Roses silk, and I'm, I'm amazed at how wonderful and soft it is. So this week got a little busier than I expected, so I wasn't doing as much stitching as normal. So my job as a mobile notary, doing loan packages, going to people's homes and signing them, um, got really busy. And then we got to celebrate my mother-in-law's 80th birthday, um, and that was the whole day, and, and that was very fun. But yesterday, um, I had some time at home. I, I really didn't have that much work. But... You know, some days are a little harder to stay at an even keel than others. And I was just a little bit sad yesterday. Um, something came up and so I just needed to work through the emotions. Um, and I just made project bags. I had all these fabrics out. So instead of my normal stitching on my cross stitch that I would do this week, I worked on project bags. And I shared in my last video, um, I looked at Jen, now let me go over to my notes on this one. Um, I found Jen Crafts Floss Tube number 23.5. She has a perfect tutorial on um, project bags. This is the size of the project bag that you get when you do the large project bag. Isn't that beautiful? So this one was one that I made last week. Then. Um, I had made another one and I wanted it larger, but I can tell you what I learned from this one. This is a larger one. And as much as I love the fabric, I found this part I tried to make bigger and I, I, I went and just did my own thing on the sizes and everything because I wanted a window around the vinyl. But I found that this is floppier and the place that I store my project bags this had to fold over a little bit. So of course, because when we can make our own things, we can tailor them perfectly. So what I decided to do was instead of doing the large size that Gen Crafts has, 
I wanted to try a 1X. So I did one a little bit larger. So what I wanted was one that was just one inch wider. So the project window size is the same, but I made this a half inch bigger and this a half inch bigger. Then the other thing I did that I figured out that's different than Jen's tutorial is that I, this is the vinyl and the vinyl really keeps stuff nice and stiff. I now put a strip of vinyl in here to keep the top stiff. So the reason that I really like this size is because when I found when I was putting my charts in, um, I had to like flip this up and over just a little bit to make it so they didn't rub. Um, and then this I wanted down a little bit lower also because it just makes it just a little bit bigger for that project material. I got one project stuck in the zipper. That was my own issue. I could have avoided that. But I just thought, well, if I can make it bigger, why not? So this actually is my preferred size now, the 1X. And I am, I, I'm not so good at tutorials. I will put in the notes just the few things that I did in addition to what Jen's tutorial was. But I realized when I get the zippers a little bit wider, it's much easier to get that perfect top stitching by it. Um, the other thing was that vinyl inside. Then I cut this top piece an inch wider and the bottom piece an inch wider just so I got that little extra room. But I love her tutorial because it has where the backing folds over. You don't do your own separate binding. I bind quilts, but those are quilts. Project bags, I just want nice and simple. So I had so much fun and made such a huge mess in my room getting all my fabrics out to make these project bags. Challenge is, as a scrappy quilter, I have smaller amounts of fabric than most people do. And I wanted to use my fabrics that I have already because I have a boatload of them. I didn't want to go out and buy more fabrics for my project bags. So this is one of them. This is my Nancy Halverson fabric. Um, this, and of course, I see you ladies and you have matching project bags for your projects that you're working on. So of course I had to do that. So I have a... Um, I have a give thanks project coming up, so of course I had to have a matching project. The other thing that I discovered is if you don't get this backing lining ironed perfect and really fusing to that fusible interfacing or fleece, you're not going to be able to do it later because I was thinking I was going to go in and iron this and no, I would have just ruined this plastic. So. This is not perfectly ironed in the back, but you know what? When you got your project in, you're not going to see it anyway. So this is my fall one. And this was the one. Um, I thought I had enough fabric that I could have used it for the backing and the front, but I didn't. And it was killing me. It's beautiful right now, but when my project is in there, that part is covered up. And I love, love that fabric, but I didn't have enough. Um, to do it for the backing. So it's in there on the inside. That's where my Beggar's Night is going to go. This is where Beggar's Christmas is going to go. So that's another one. This was one. This was just the size that I had. Perfect for the inside. Um, and these are fabrics that I got from my mom and my sister. So they're ones that I wouldn't typically quilt with because they're just a little bit brighter, but they are making gorgeous project bags. And then you can see my matching zippers. I'm going to show you my haul of zippers in a moment. This is another one. So again, I didn't have tons of this fabric. So I made the smaller size. So this is Jen's large size. Um, but that one is going to be fun. Then I only had this tiny piece of fabric. This was one I checked with my sister and she said, nope, that was mom's fabric. Um, but I love it. It's thistles. So I love thistles and I love dandelions. Again, not in my garden. I like them out in the wild. But it was just enough size. So I wanted to try Jen's small size. So this was made according to her instructions. The only thing is I did add that vinyl um, to the inside. And then I did the double stitching. Because when I was watching um, Ridey, Ridey Blake Designs, they were talking, I think that was the one, they were talking about doing just an extra 
top stitch to hold this zipper inside down. So I just got an extra top stitch along the bottom and the top. But you can see I've got matching zippers to go with my project bags. So that's what I did yesterday. But this is my haul. I've got it all in a basket to show you and share with you. But look at these zippers. So I had shared at first where I got my zippers at... Um, Joann's and they have them folded and they're Coates and Clark and then a lot of ladies were commenting that they just do a touch of the iron and it flattens it out um, But then I went to Hobby Lobby and got this. This is a YKK zipper and these were like two dollars um, But they're the great I got 14 inch zippers But again, I'm gonna be using 16 inch zippers on those in the future because it is a lot easier to work with that zipper I went on Etsy and look at the zippers that you can get. This is Zip It. What is it? Zip It Zippers. Um, and I get now this wonderful color card. But the cool thing was, these are, you know, I'm not good at math. But these are only about 50 cents each the way that I bought them. So Etsy, I ordered them Monday morning. I got it Thursday afternoon. This is their collection. It is all, I think it was 36 zippers, one of every color they carry, which was perfect for me because I'm scrappy. I'm not going to be making all the same color project bags. So this is perfect for me because I can see the color. So if I need to order more, it's going to be really easy. And then this was, I want to say it was like, did I have my, ah, I wish I had it. Um, I had it written down, but I want to say this was like, I'm not even going to say. So anyway, check it out. Zip It Zippers, one of every color they have and it in all their different sizes. I just got the 14 inch. Next time I'm going to get the 16 inch. Then I made an additional order and you can get them. I got a set of 25 and I just went through the color chart and I ordered, you can see I usually like the darker. So I ordered 25 of these. Then I shared in my last floss tube number two. All the projects that I want to make with one of the books um, stitched by Anila Hui, I think is how you say her name. So I just got a pack of 25, the colors that I wanted for those little, little zipper projects. These are the other things um, that I got. So this is my haul. I've been getting it over a period of time, but um, now I'm going to share this with you. So Scattered Seed Samplers on their Etsy site, they have the Little Wren handwork club. So that first project that I finished, that was number one. Then in floss tube number two, I believe it was, I shared the project number two. Now project number three came. I love how they come. They come in these hard packages. So they, when they get crammed in my mailbox, they don't get hurt. I just love how she packages it. Then I already took it out. So it's not in the shiny bag. So I took it out of the bag, but I wanted you to see, this is how the kit comes. It comes with the fabric, it comes with the called for DMC, it comes with this, a needle and thread and a little charm so I can make a scissors fob, as well as the linen. So it has the linen in there as well and it is a beautiful um, dyed linen. So it comes with that as well as the pattern. So this is pattern number three, remember me. Now I am not as much of a blue person. Um, so on this one, I am probably gonna switch out that blue, even though it goes perfect with the fabric, I'm probably gonna switch that out for a variegated pink, but it will be fun to personalize this and make this my own. So that's what I got from Etsy. Mm. Then, I got quite a few other things. When I ordered my two, so I have ordered, let me see, I wrote down where I've gotten my haul from because this is going to be a bit of a jumble. I found things from the Zip It Zippers on Etsy, but also I love shopping Etsy, especially right now. I am really, really wanting to support small business. Hollis Hands Create, I got a lot of fabrics. I'm not going to show all my fabrics, um, my linens this time, um, but I also got patterns. Um, Kitten Stitcher, she has a website and I love watching her YouTubes. One, two, three, Stitch, as well as that Scattered Seed Samplers. So these are some of the things that I got. I got these off of Kitten Stitcher site. These are silks. Um, I just wanted to try these two colors, but this is the Thread Gatherer Silk and Colors. So excuse the 
glare that you're going to see in my glasses, but this way I can read what I'm getting. So this one is Cypress Umber, and this one is Latte. So they're beautiful silks um, that I'm going to be learning to stitch with. Then when I went to Hobby Lobby or Michael's somewhere this week, I saw DMC has changed a lot in 20 years. They have some cool variegated colors. So these were two DMCs. This one is 4505, but I thought that was really pretty. And this one is 4504. Pretty cool, DMC. Um, then in with all the things that I was gathering, I also got classic color, Colorworks Brown Sugar. I have a large collection of Gentle Arts, Weeks, Classic Color Works, and also some Baldoni um, over dyed embroidery floss. So I thought, no, I'm not going to need to order anymore. But of course, that changed. Then look at with Hollis, um, Hollis Hands Creates. I got a neat project um, card. And I'm deciding, I'm seeing how a lot of you ladies are keeping track of things. You have your thread drops and you have information. I'm not sure how I'm going to do that because of the way that I have had my floss organized. These are moleskin, they come like this, moleskin notebooks. I love the moleskin notebooks. These are just the smaller ones that I get on Amazon. But when I got my kitten stitcher order, there was this neat sticker, so of course it goes on here. Right now, I, I love notebooks, and so right now, I am keeping my stuff organized in this, this notebook. So it's all in one place, which I keep in my tote with my floss, and I'm even putting down the threads that I'm trying and then I will mark down the ones that I use. Then I have like notes from other floss tubers that I'm watching and then a collection of my threads and we'll see what else I put in these. So I just got a collection of notebooks um, and that's, that's how I'm going to try how I'm going to keep track of things. So something else that I got, I love watching um, April, May, June Stitcher. I follow her on Instagram. She also has floss tubes. Um, but she had this project that she was showing and I just loved it. It's called Let My Example Shine. And so this is a really fun project. And then look at the inside. I didn't realize it's a needle keep. And then this is the inside of the needle keep. So we'll see if I do it that way or change it up. But I love that. And then I got two of Brenda Gervais patterns. There we go. Um, our place in the mountains were just getting gray squirrels back. They were pretty much um, gone. They're coming back. We don't know exactly what the issue was. But I love gray squirrels, so this will be something that I do and have up at the cabin. This one is Autumn's Bounty. Then another part that I got from Brenda Gervais is Three Tulips. I saw this on Pinterest, I think. And, oh my gosh, I loved everything about it. And I can't wait to start stitching it. But it's on 40 count parchment weeks and I've not been able to find this piece in stock. So I really love everything about it. I want to try to do it exactly like it, but I just need to find that 40 count in stock. And then I also got two of the threads that go with it. One is the Pelican Gray and one is the Endive. So those were some that I didn't have, so I got that. Then I checked with Lori on Mischievous Stitches on what her favorite needle was. And so she said the Bowen um, 28 count um, tapestry. So I needed to get those. I wanted something very, very thin. I had tapestry 26, but those were making a bigger hole when I was stitching in my linen and I didn't want that. So I haven't even tried stitching with those yet. But my commenters, it was so wonderful ladies. Thank you so much for answering my questions. Cause I was saying, what is your favorite needle? And a lot of people mentioned they like Pat Carson I think that's what it was. I should have written it down. Pat Carson needles and also ball tip needles. So I'm going to be trying those as well. So thank you. Then I saw Lottie Daw um, had some patterns that I just loved. So this was one. It's called um, it's called Me and You, but it says Come Sit Down, Just Me and You. I love the simplicity of it and. We decorate kind of in the front room with craftsmen. We're, we're transitioning there, and I really like it. So to me, it looked beautiful. When I saw the picture, it looked darker. So I may do a darker background than this, but um, now that my husband and I became empty nesters um, last month, I just thought that would be perfect. So this is our new life, just my husband and I right now. So 
that was kind of very meaningful for me. Um, so come sit down, just me and you. What else did I get? Oh, I love the design. I love the colors. It's, you know, I hear you ladies say, I love everything about it. I love everything about it. Even the saying, um, oh, gentle words and peaceful ways. Um, it just makes me happy. So I, I can't wait to start working on that one. Um, and then another one that I found, again, Three Lilies by Lottie Daw. Um, I saw this on Kitten Stitcher. I think that's where I saw it. And um, I just bought it because I, I love, to me, this looks so craftsman. I love that and the side. I'm not sure that I'm going to do that top alphabet because I was really thinking, I know that there are craftsmen um, style of lettering. And so that's where I thought this one just called to me to want more of craftsman style lettering, but it is beautiful as it is. So we'll see by the time I get to do it, what it is. Um, let's see. I was watching, oh, I think it was Celeste Creates. She was showing her birthday haul. And I think that's where I saw this. Um, but I saw it, I put her on hold, I found it, I ordered it, I got it. So this is Friends of the Heart. Now, I love, because up in the mountains, um, we have fox, we have deer. What else is on here? Um, blackbirds, squirrels. Um, we have crows. I do not like our crows, but we got them. So the only thing that I'm going to do that makes this different is I'm going to make this like our log cabin instead of the regular heart. But I really, really, because I have a rug in my bedroom that has this type of a flower and it again just made me happy so I know that's what a lot of you ladies say and that's why you get so many of these things what else do I have on Instagram I saw this and um, I got it so oh joyous day by blackbird designs because I know if you don't get the blackbird pattern it's gonna be gone and it's really neat because they have the one that they reproduced it from on the back um, but what I really really loved was this most of all so I love the whole thing gonna do it then another blackbird that I wanted was this one I don't know that I'm gonna do the background so yellow um, but beautiful and then this one by Kathy Barrick um, again I saw the deer reminds me so much of the mountains but I love and heaven and nature sing I love Christmas carols and so every time I see this I keep thinking and heaven and nature sing I'm, I'm not a good singer but it goes in my head and I, I really enjoy it. And I will probably put, instead of a year, I'll probably put the Egan's right there as our last name. And here's something fun. I just found Hello from, is it Hello from Liz Matthews? Let me put, I'm going to share with you who I've been watching. Um, uh, 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 I have all my notes. Let's see if I can find it. Dang, this is where, if I knew how to... Um, Oh, girl, I'm tired. Oh, here it is. If I learn how to edit, I'll edit that out. And if I don't, boom, I'm just going to pop it up there because editing and maybe just one more thing that I want to do. Um, hello from Liz Matthews. She was sharing. I was watching her video, and she's a designer, so I need to check out all her things. And I know I've been seeing, I think it's Quaker's Pumpkins I've been seeing of hers. But um, I heard Kathy Barrick is her mom. So um, that was kind of cool, something new that I learned. Okay, so we're 43 minutes in there. I'm going to forge ahead. I keep saying I want to make my videos shorter, but I'm going to forge ahead because I wanted to share these on my last video, and I did not. Oops, sorry, my dear. I did not share these, and I want to get these done because ladies have been asking about these, and I am so sorry to share these with you because I made these, oh, 15 years ago. And they are beautiful. This is what got me wanting to learn how to embroidery. This is, my sister made this. I decided I had to, and I did it just like this. The backing was at the time, it was called Sandcastle. And it looks almost like a quilted fabric that I am doing embroidery on. Um, and this is by, it is Crab Apple Hill. And it, I, took the, I took the glass out so it wouldn't shine. This is my Christmas one. And then all I do, I have all these seasonal ones. And I just use this frame and I change them out. But that pattern is um, Heart of Christmas. Crab Apple Hill Studios. Right now it's not, um, it's not on the market. But maybe on eBay you can find it. Or maybe, gosh, wouldn't it be amazing if enough ladies asked her and she was able to do this on PDF. Because it is an amazing series 
of patterns. This next one is Heart of Autumn. So this is the pattern Heart of Autumn. This is Heart of Autumn. So again, it goes in my frame and um, just makes me happy. I love that one. Then it's funny because I had given gifts to my sister-in-law, who I got to see this week too, um, because she used to do this awesome thing for my kids called Cousin Camp and got all the kids together. And I just wanted to give her gifts as a thank you. So I gave her my, um, I had stitched one up um, and I gave her mine and I have not redone it yet, but there is Heart of Summer. So I need to redo that one. But I had also given her my Heart of Spring. And so before I gave it to her, when I had a color copier, I made a color copy of it. And it's funny, for years, I put my color copy in my frame. And if you're back far enough, you don't even know it's a color copy. I do want to remake it because um, I do love embroidery. But I think one of my favorite ones of these, this is the last one that I had, Heart of the Garden. Because I am such a gardener. And this is the one that's up most of the year. So again... I am so sorry that these are not seeming to be available right now, but go on Crab Apple Hill Studio, shoot her an email, and ask her, could she do this as a PDF pattern? This is another one that I had up. I used to be a toll painter. I was a woodworker, toll painter for years, and this was actually a toll painting pattern that I just transitioned to needle punch, and um, I colored, I, I used a Sharpie and did that in, but this is another embroidery one. And um, I've had it for a long time now. Um, I want to I want to do something else with with for Valentine's Day. So who knows what I'll be doing with that one? But those those were my embroidery. That's what I did for years um, in between. So I used um, I thought I could just use my DMC floss, and I wouldn't need to buy anything else. I thought it was going to be a very inexpensive way to get into a hobby, but of course I found um, at my local needle workshop, needles and niceties, um, all the over dyed threads. And so I bought all the over dyed threads. So my next video that I'm going to do after I'm done with this, I'll probably go eat dinner and do my companion quilting video. And it's going to be sharing my mom's quilts. So I have them on the floor in front of me. I have shared many stories in the four videos that I've done so far. I have two floss tubes and two quilting videos. I have shared the meaning of what my mother's, um, my mother's story, my mother's life has meant to me and um, why, so these are her quilts. I will be sharing in the quilting video that goes along with this. Oh, the sun's gone down um, and it's kind of dark, but I will be sharing with you much more about these. I am just going to do a quick show because we're already at 47 minutes. I'm going to show you very quick. Then I will be doing my quilting video where I'm actually sitting, not at my chair, but with a quilt in the backdrop. Um, this is one of my mom's. She loved these um, 30s reproduction fabrics. She loved embroidery. She won a prize with this. I tried to find, when, when my mom passed away six years ago, um, all the quilts that she had done. She was a prolific quilter. Um, and she had a quilt diary. And we all got the pages that went with the quilts that we got. I just couldn't find it. And I thought, I am going to do this video. I'm not going to take forever. That's why I may not even edit it, because it's like, if I, if I just don't get it done, I'm just going to put it off and not get it done. I could not find um, the quilt diary page that went with this, but I believe this was her first, she won first prize at her quilt, um, at the Black Canyon Quilt Show. So this, oh, let me get a drink. Um, this is one of her quilts, and this was hanging in her sewing room much of the time. But I will be showing this, is that upside down? Yeah, it is. Okay, I will be showing this much more in depth in my quilting number three video, but it is hand done. So you can see she hand embroidered, hand quilted, and that gave her much joy. And it was very inspiring for me. This is another quilt that I will be sharing. This is what she used as a tablecloth. My mom and dad had an oak round table and she has a lot of tablecloths um, cut like this because this is what she used and she really used it as a tablecloth. So when I went with my kids, I said, oh, mom, um, is beautiful, but 
mm, I don't want it to get ruined um, with us. So hand quilted again. This is her embroidery. So you can see from what I showed you of my embroidery, my stitches were much smaller. My mom just did larger stitches. But look at that hand quilting. Um, I tried learning hand quilting with thread from her. Um, and I, I just didn't get it. Um, so I still need to learn. This is a fun one. And I'm going to share a store, a neat story about this. Um, and so again, if you want to check out more about these, go on, subscribe, and you're going to see my quilting number three video. This is another one. There is an amazing story that goes with it because there is a secret compartment. There's a secret compartment in this quilt and it's here and it contains something very treasured. But you got to watch the other video to see. This is another one that she, this is a real um, quilt that she repaired with the help of a friend and hand stitched it and repaired it. Amazing. So I will be sharing more about that. And then this is going to be Emily's quilt. So my niece Emily will be getting this quilt. So you can see this is just a rag quilt. It's, this has been packed in a box. I'm sorry, Emily. Packed in a box for two months and I just haven't sent it to you. But now I'm going to send it off on Monday. But I just wanted to share. This is a treasured quilt. I will share more about it in quilting video number three. So you're just going to have to watch it. Um, but why this one is so, so, even though it's so simple, why this is um, a treasured quilt that I'm sharing with Emily. So there you go. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, I love to close out these videos with um, encouraging you to choose joy nevertheless. And again, that's something that my mom and I share, joy nevertheless. Um, and I want to thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for subscribing and the amazing welcome that I have received from FlossTube, the amazing comments that I've gotten and encouragement. Um, so thank you so much for watching. Then I also want to share with you a message of hope. So this is, um, this is a neat devotional that I got. I got a matching one for my dad, went to try to rebuy it, and it was just a little bit different. This is Billy Graham, Hope for Each Day, Morning and Evening Devotionals. So this is the very last thing that I'm going to share with you. It does have short morning and evening devotionals. This was perfect for me this week as just it was it was an emotional week and um, just missing my mom because it's coming up on the anniversary of when I said goodbye to her for the very last time um, and then the anniversary of her death in November and um, thinking of my dad and how how they loved each other. He's, he loves her still. Um, and so it was just an emotional week. Um, so this just brought me so much joy. It's called Perfect Peace. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace. That's from Romans 15, 13. Then this is what it says. I know that modern living taxes the faith of the strongest Christians, but none of us should doubt the ability of God to give us grace sufficient for our trials, even amid the stresses of this century. We Christians are to trust quietly that God is still on the throne. He is a sovereign God working things out according to his own plan. Some section hands on a British railroad found a thrush's nest under the rail and the hen peacefully sitting on the eggs, undisturbed by the roar of the fast trains above and around her. What a picture of perfect trust. The Bible says, You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you. Isaiah 26, 3. Believe me, God's grace is more than adequate for these times. Even as I grow older, I am still learning day by day to keep my mind centered on Christ. When we do, the worries and anxieties and concerns of the world pass away and nothing but perfect peace is left in the human heart. So for this year, 2020 has been a year of challenges, one challenge after another, after another, and it's not over yet, but God is in control. That's how I have my peace. I would like to say it's perfect peace, but um, it's joy nevertheless. So thank you. Choose joy nevertheless. And thank you for staying with me to the very end. God bless you guys.